than the center. But the height is higher the center to the tip. So you've got a funny shape to deal with. So if you're putting something near the rim of the craft, it means you've got a shape cut like a lump of cheese. Now, if you try to cut a lump of cheese out of a piece of plywood, it's not the easiest thing to do. To put these little cent uh, end bits in, what we call the rim, it took one day to do just one, and there's 64 of them to do. I said to myself, this is not good. There must be a better way with this problem. I went to bed and I slept and thought hard on it. I must have done. You see, the following Sunday, my wife said to the team, he'd be talking to those bloody aliens again through the night. But I said, ah, oh, that's all right, but I got the answer. That is the beauty. It was simple. All we had to do was get long strips of timber, bond them, put a lot of weight on top to make sure they really bond to the thickness that we required for the inside of that band of, we were putting on. Wait a week, went back, and by a hand cutting tool, we cut the angle that we wanted. We then took the whole length of strips up to the site. Now, all we did was chop them, and we can now do eight in one day. So that speed up the work. So it is sometimes we hit a problem, and it takes us a long time to do one bit. And you say to yourself, I don't know if this is worth doing. It's taking so long. But if you go and you sit down and you really think of it, you can find a way in which you can shorten the time and speed the work up. We did, and we have plenty of uh, records in newspapers and television programs that show you how we did it. Now, the thing is, we have to put a control. We have to put the power unit in. We have to control it. In everything I know that NASA done, they think on a number of motors, a motor for this, a motor for that. In a disc-shaped object, this thinking has to be, for, to be forgotten. You have to forget it. You cannot keep any disc stable at 2,000 feet when you're operating on a number of individual motors. Not only is it involving a lot of control equipment to get everything right, it just won't balance. You have to solve the problem of stability. And what we do is we put this PAR unit as near to the rim as we can. So we have this massive weight spinning, and that's holding it stable. If we allow this situation to continue, all the vehicle will do is go straight up, straight down. That's all it can do. So we have to do something to get an angle on it. To do that, we need to strike this motion with a plunger. You must have a number of plungers around. You cannot strike on the inside of it. It, nothing happens. You have to strike it on the outside of the unit running. So that means you're limited. If we look at this cup, we can't put it on there, which would be, in your view, the best place to put it for stability. It is, but we want to use that one engine to angle it. To do that, it means we have to build it in, 20 meters in, and then build in the plungers, 64 of them, to give us a nice smooth angle movement. And what happens is this. You're powering a craft. First, you're putting a lot of power on top on all the 64 units. So it rises slowly. Because if you don't, what would happen is this. The power comes up, you go superconductor, and the vehicle just dumped up into space. You'll have a big bill from the insurance company because you knocked down a few houses in the process by the air moving in to fill that gap. You have to put a lot of power on the top because what happens is as you speed up the machine, the air beneath it and above starts to rotate. 
And as it speeds up, it starts to open up, top and bottom. When you get that speed right up to go superconductor, you have got a tunnel to draw the vehicle up. So when it, all that kinetic energy bangs it up, it's got a suction pulling it up. As you appreciate, all t- tornadoes and that, the forces go up. The objects are drawn up and thrown out over the top to drop back. And this is really what's happening with the craft. It has been drawn up in the same manner. It is coming up to the top. But of course, it's got too much force. It will continue on. If we put a lot of force on the top, we hold it down. So we let it creep up gently. So the air moves in to fill the gap. When it reaches the height you want to clear everything, you can now let it go. The speed of the vehicle is controlled by how fast you put those rollers. To make those rollers move, you must either increase the load or decrease the load if you want to reduce the speed. Now, you may say, how fast can it go? Well, if you're wondering whether it will go to the speed of light, I have to confirm that I agree with Einstein. Anything that is at rest while on the surface of the Earth cannot reach the speed of light. But if the whole of the mass is in motion at the speed of light while at rest, it can only fly at the speed of light. Could such a craft be brought to the speed of light while stationary on the ground? It can. I wouldn't do it. If somebody was on board, I would use a probe. But at this, my age, I would think I have no time to muck about to prove whether Einstein is right. But I do know that the craft can fly its natural cruising speed would be the speed of the universe, 139.500 miles per second would be the maximum cruising speed of that vehicle. I can therefore guarantee that if I set a demonstration up and the craft's ready, that I could pass it from the USA, from Denver Airport, and we would get a report back in 20 minutes from Heathrow that it's landed. Now, conventional aircraft, you can never do that. <laughs> you, can, you may wonder how that is done, but it is very simple. The fact is that you are making a vacuum, you are making a tunnel for which the, vac- the object moves. I don't know the such day when vacuum technology came into being. But you may know that even today there are shops that still use the system. The office is on the top floor. There's a pipe down to the top floor. And when the man wants the check to be sent, uh, sent to the top floor, he pulls a container, shoves it in, and away it goes at speed to the top floor. It gets up there much quicker than you can get up there. Then it comes back the same way with a change or whatever uh, receipt or something. But that is the sort of technology that's involved. A tunnel is formed in the atmosphere. Therefore, we can say to you that if a vehicle goes out into space and is coming back in, does it get as hot as a Saturn rocket or American satellite or Russian satellite? And how does it look or how would it look? We all know that we've seen the newsreels that they return like a far ball with a long tail. The disc won't do that. It comes back as a ball of fire. That is how you see it from the Earth. How do you see inside of that craft? Well, you don't see much of heat. It is only slightly warm because the amount of electrons you're pushing out is greater than the amount of electrons that have been emitting from that ball of fire. It takes about a few seconds to get into the atmosphere and then the temperature resumes to normal. So the, the craft doesn't get damaged and the people inside are at no risk. 
The next question that comes to mind, and this is what Sir Freddie later said, and Sir uh, um, Kin of the uh, British Airways, where they saw a demonstration, they say no man could live in that craft. At 1,000 miles an hour and turning almost instant, 180 degrees would kill anyone on board. I said, it won't. And he said, you get in it, do that demonstration again, and we'll buy it. That's very nice of him. I can, I'd like to do the same. And I said to him, that craft cannot contain an atmosphere. There's no way. And we had Dave Allen. I don't know if you know the actor, Dave Allen. He's quite a lad. He came a whole day. He saw a demonstration on television. And he came to me and with his, uh, his uh, director, and uh, this is what he wanted to do. He said, John, I want to fly in that craft. I want to fly from out the country, and I want to come you to, to direct into Wembley uh, Stadium. We'll get everybody in there. And he said, they'll dress me up like a Martian, and I'll come out. Now, I liked the idea. It was great. The problem was I couldn't risk him getting killed. Because if his suit he wore to hold the pressure burst, he would be dead before we could get into Wembley. But it shows you that this was a very exciting thing. And I'd like to say again, on this one Sunday I was demonstrating, I had quite a crowd of people. A coach came through, and one of your American coaches with about 40 passengers. Their intention this Sunday was to go to Stonehenge. Did they get there? No, they didn't. They made a terrible mistake. They set off for excitement at Stonehenge and end up in Mortimer Park here as they passed through. What happened was there was so much cheering going on from the demonstrations we were given that they asked the driver to stop. They wanted to see what was going on. Now, each one of them came and watched they really enjoyed themselves. And one of them was speaking to me, and I said, well, we've got a haul of stuff on show. They said, can we see it? So we took, I took them all down to the hall, and I went round looking at everything, and they took pictures. Now, is, is there anyone here that went to Mortimer with intentions of going to Stonehenge that failed to get there, but has taken a photo with me with some object? If anyone here... It's, it's present, and I know that day I'm talking about, if you've got any photos, we, John Thomas would love them to put in the book. If anyone can remember, have you been to England, and you're going to Stonehenge, you've passed through Mortimer, we want those photos. We'll let you have them back. But we would like to know who you were, because I lost the book of all your names and addresses. Now, the next thing is, if that's a project, interest people so much that they completely forget where they were going. You can imagine what the next run of demonstrations would go, which I'm now informing the government that I'm going to do. In the, the last few books, you have got the place's name, you've got the time of departure, where it's going to land. And, the, and you can see that the time it takes, no aircraft can equal it. I have got the permission from the airport's name to do that demonstration. I already got to give them three weeks' notice because they have to notify all aircraft in the area to be clear of this, uh, this place at that time to give enough clearance. I've told the... Uh, I have in Book 6, as you'll see, given the Air Authority and Navigation Board the following details. They must not order the craft to go on any path and another aircraft is traveling that is not more than 2,000 feet away. They must not bring the craft or give us details that will bring the craft lower than 2,000 above any other aircraft flying in the area. These are the conditions that I've told them I must have. Now, I can tell you now I think about 12 months from now, 
all airports naming these books will be standing on alert for the start of those demonstrations. And I mean it. The government has now been told that this is going to go ahead. They have been warned. If they've got any complaints, they now tell me. America has complained to me that San Francisco is out of the question. They're afraid that there would be an accident. But they have offered me to other airports. I now will have to look at them and see which one I shall take for the test. Keep watching the books and you'll see the airports, and we will basically be putting in the authority given to me from the airports for landing that craft at those airfields. On top of that, you will read my letters to the different government departments telling them what's going to be involved, how it's to be done, and who will be involved. I am not hiding anything from anyone. We're going straight in the front door of all the top people. They've got just a few months to make their complaints heard. And their complaints will be in the books so you can see what is going on. I promise you, when we come back with that craft to demonstrate, you'll be there at 9 o'clock in the morning, you'll be there at midnight, and I guarantee you'll be there next day. Because what you see, you won't be able to believe and you'll stay to check what you saw was true. And I can tell you, I will tease your mind very hard. I will get you shocked, and you'll clap when you see the next step of that demonstration. I'm out to toy with authority in a manner never before been toyed. I mean that I'm going to make the top people bend to the alternative energy field. I'm going to make them announce that alternative energy is a possibility, and not just a possibility, but a fact. And I promise you, too, that the money that comes in, and I guarantee there'll be a lot of money coming in for this one, because it's going to be so public, not just one place, but it's going to be worldwide. I'm not leaving any country out. I'm going to give them hell until they give in. Now, we may have something in October, we may have a bit of a show in October with the generator. If you make sure your name and address is given to John, he will see that you are all given notification at least a month when we're up and running, because you are so good, I want you to be rewarded. I want you to see what we've been talking about. And you can take photos, bring your cameras. You're not going to be far. You take all the photos you want. Now, who can offer you better? <laughs> if you don't give us your name and address, you won't get notification of the demonstration. I don't know whether we can come here. I'm going to keep in touch with Toby and that to see if we can plan something once we know we're ready. But I promise you, when we get to the disc, don't miss it, because it is certainly going to be excitement. When I start getting what we say excited, I go all the way. I don't mess about, and you will enjoy it. But another thing is, it gives you a chance to look close hand at what is involved. It gives you an opportunity to study it. And I must have a week at least for a demonstration period because I want everyone to really look at it. I want everyone to hold it, examine it, so that they can say they not only saw it, but they actually held it too. With a disc, we will make a small model open so you can see all the sections, how it all goes together. And you can bring your children We'll do the best and make sure they get a happy time from it. And we'd like to hear your views. John would like to know, what sort of things would you like us to have done, ready? T-shirts with symbols on of the craft, postcards. If you tell us what you would like to be available to buy, 
we will have time to prepare so we have these things ready. We have a nice T-shirt that was done for New Zealand a few years back when we did a show. And it went very well. John's going to try to get them done. Now, I don't know what you, you people like to, as souvenirs to take back. So to, to, to tell John the sort of things you, you think you'd like to see on sale. So we get them ready. Can you? SEG. SEG. Oh, well, I, I, we will try to make a little... The Jeff, who's in charge of the development work, he has agreed he will try to make a bar with uh, three, four rollers running round it. And if we get this down cheap enough, we'll get a few made so you have something to, to take home that you can get. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't. John, can you hear? People who are people who are people who are being independent want to grow their own food need the device for a central power unit for themselves. Yes. Yes. Uh, we are looking, we, we have a gentleman, in fact, very interested to see if we can put some investment into developing a unit to produce clean, pure water, uh, because where he's delivering water at the moment, uh, it's not the cleanest he can get. I think that's right, you know John, what it said? Yeah. Oh, oh, to replace the mains. You mean? Oh, yes. Uh, I don't see the reason why you shouldn't have the right to have your own power unit. And I think that if enough people come forward and say they want one, and we can supply them, I don't see why the power people can, well, should complain. They should take away their power. If they don't, call me in. I'll shift it for you. So we will take, we will uh, sort out the problem. We'll talk to you later. Leave your name and address so we can send you information what's going on. Are you going to have the news press there? That's how I can't quite media, hear. Is the news media going to be present at the demonstration? You bet they will. <laughs> <laughs> when they hear what's going to happen, they'll be there. Because the first thing is they like to have something to write about when it goes against the grain. They love it. And so do I. Could you show a picture of the saucer to some of the people who might not have seen it? Uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we've got a load of slide, uh, slides to show you, and we'll do one at a time and talk about it. Then we, uh, you can give, ask questions, and then we'll work on to the next slide. But um, uh, you will see them, yeah. definitely. We, we're putting them on. We decided if we try to do too much tonight, we won't be able to give you the funny side of what's been involved. And I think the funny side is the best part. <laughs> Are the uh, the tapes that were taken of the demonstration in England still available? That somebody in America got them. There must be about 40 people who got city films of their visit uh, on that particular Sunday. All mine have been destroyed. We have been trying to get uh, tags from Germany, from England, from the BBC ITV programs, and they, what they say to us is that the time that's gone, they would have destroyed the tapes. We... Well, my, some colleagues in Germany didn't believe them, so they pestered and pestered them for a tape. They did basically get a tape, but they have put bars through, so you can't copy it. Now, we have done the best to copy it. Now, if what is interesting, look at the time clock running on it. You'll find there's 15 minutes missing of that tape. That 15 minutes. It's the freight demonstration. You could see the beginning, 
and you see the end. But where is that middle bit? That 15 minutes in the middle of it. I saw it. I cannot hear. Are you aware, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you aware of it's a flying saucer, German flying saucer, in Hans Kohler? No, no. 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 Sorry. Uh, will you be going into um, uh, more into your square theory tomorrow? Or, uh, yes. Uh, I thought probably you would like to hear more about the funny side and get that out of the way. Uh, I hope I'm right in, in giving you the funny side of life. Of course, there's a lot more funny side. Uh, I could write a book of the things that happen. And uh, I hope that the TV crew that was doing a film at Stanley House will go ahead as planned with our next film on this technology. They love it, and it seems that when I get back to London, they'll be starting the communications with me, and I hope that they will put in all these bits of my life which are really funny when you look at it now, so you can see exactly what went on. Uh, there won't be the same people actually involved, but I, I think they'll find somebody to match them very well because some of them are dead. But I think if we get this film over, so many people will be interested in alternative energy. We'll see a lot more people coming to know more about it. And I think it'll help many more TV programs to take it more serious. I don't know how the shows are going here at the moment. But I did tell Toby, I, I will have to say this, when he came before Christmas, I said to him, Toby, I don't want to come and talk here. Because... I need a day so I can demonstrate and then talk. Well, in fact, John and I, and we checked what it would take in time. And perhaps John would tell you that the goods came at 9 o'clock, and he will tell you how long it was and what we, how far we got. <clears throat> we had some people come that are helping us out from <clears throat> Pennsylvania. It came at 9 o'clock in the morning. I had just left uh, late <laughs> to pick up uh, John, who was staying at my folks' house just down the road. Uh, we started talking. They brought in some demonstration material that we could, can bring when we have more time. And uh, we started discussing the work and the progress of the work, and we continued on until midnight with only two breaks for uh, at lunch and dinner that my wife graciously prepared. She didn't think we were going to stay that long. And she wasn't going to have that much company. But it went right through to midnight. And we had to, one of the funny things is we have to get a hold of John and pull him away from people because he won't eat. He won't sit down. He won't drink, take a drink of water. He won't go to the bathroom. I don't know how he does that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. But he won't stop. So we have to kind of try to pace him. <laughs> Actually, we're pacing ourselves because I can't go that long. <laughs> So we went straight through to midnight, and they were still wanting to go further. So you see, from a gentleman, he tells you what it's like to have me in your home. <laughs> There's no seat for the wicked. But the reason is, you can, well, he never kept pace, but he only had to give in. But you're so tied in with it, you get so tied in. And that's why I have to have more than an hour and a bit or two hours. I do need a day. Because you get so tied in by 12 o'clock at night, we haven't really discussed anything. And you haven't had your dinner, your tea, you haven't been to the loo, and it's quite natural at this time, you've got everybody rushing for one spot. I am sorry we can't do this. I'm very disappointed. And I do mean it. I am disappointed. The only reason I came was because Toby kept on advertising. 
I felt sorry for him because I knew what his objective was. He was so desperate to get his hands on and we could admire that because he's rubbing up against the grain. He wants to get his hands into action. Boy, I can give him this action. Unfortunate, we've got to turn, find somewhere to get that money from. When that money is available, Toby will be certainly kept busy. You'll learn how to keep awake all night to keep a job you've got to get done, finished. And you can keep awake. It's the job. It's so interesting. The time simply just goes. If that we bought this stuff that we were testing to see how long we needed here, by the time we sort of got half in, it would be time for the show to finish. And so you can appreciate how I feel that we couldn't get anything here. We have uh, bought the, uh, the slides. We bought slides. Not as many as we had ready because an hour, well, we can't show that many. Because each one we've got to talk about. You want to ask questions about it. Two minutes. Two minutes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the end of the show now. Tomorrow we'll be showing the slides. We'll be talking each one in turn. We want you to ask questions about each one. So we, when you finish with your questions, we move to the next slide. And then after that, we'll go back to the squares. Are you happy about the idea? No. Don't forget to join the name address because we want you to be present when we go airborne because you deserve it. To put up with such punishment as you've put up with tonight. The other thing is, do tell us any ideas that you think would be good to sell at such a show. Thank you.